Coming of the King 25 Readings for Advent by J.C. Wright Compiled and edited by Mary Davis and published by tenofthose.com Hello and welcome to day 22 of our Advent readings, No Room in the Inn. Today's passage will be from Luke, chapter 2, verses 1 to 7. In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. This was the first census that took place while Quirinus was governor of Syria. And everyone went to their own town to register. So, Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house and line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him, and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born, and she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger, because there was no guest room available for them. Let us notice the manner in which Christ is born. He is not born under the roof of his mother's house, but in a strange place and at an inn. When born, he is not laid in a carefully prepared cradle. He was laid in a manger, because there was no room in the inn. We see here the grace and condensation of Christ. Had he come to save mankind with royal majesty, surrounded by his father's angels, it would have been an act of undeserved mercy. Had he chosen to dwell in a palace with power and great authority, we should have reason enough to wonder. But to become poor, as the very poorest of mankind, and lowly as the very lowliest, this is a love that passes knowledge. It is unspeakable and unsearchable. Never let us forget that through this humiliation, Jesus had purchased for us a title to glory. Through his life of suffering, as well as his death, he obtained eternal redemption for us. All through his life he was poor for our sakes, from the hour of his birth to the hour of his death. And through his poverty we are made rich. 2 Corinthians, chapter 8, verse 9. Let us beware of despising the poor because of their poverty. Their condition is one which the Son of God has sanctified and honoured by taking it voluntarily on himself. God does not show partiality. He looks at the hearts of men and women and not at their incomes. Let us never be ashamed of the cross of poverty if God thinks fit to lay it upon us. To be godless and covetous is disgraceful, but it is no disgrace to be poor. A humble dwelling place, coarse food and a hard bed are not pleasing to flesh and blood, but they are what the Lord Jesus himself willingly accepted from the day of his entrance into this world. Wealth ruins far more souls than poverty. When the love of money begins to creep over us, let us think of the manger at Bethlehem and of him who was laid in it. Such thoughts may deliver us from much harm. Let us pray. Royal King, Son of God, Saviour of the world, you became as poor as the very poorest, you became as lowly as the very lowliest. I confess that I am easily tempted by the law of money and possessions, and I am often envious of others. Remind me today of where my real treasure lies, that it lies in your love that is beyond understanding. It is unspeakable and unsearchable. From the hour of your birth to the hour of your death, you were poor for my sake. With my heart and soul, I give you thanks and praise. Amen. Amen. 